How easy is it for a woman to falsely accuse a man of rape and destroy his career without any proof, only her word? It is way too easy. I could call the cops and say my husband hit me with no proof and they would go to his work and arrest him. That's bullshit. It happens a lot more than people realize. Rape charge, one year in prison. That sentence tonight for the woman who falsely accused two football players from Sacred Heart University in Connecticut of rape. The students say what she did has changed their lives forever, even though they have been cleared of all wrongdoing. I'm going to news reporter Marcus Solis with our lead story tonight. He's live in Bridgeport. Marcus. That's right, Bill. Those two students were never arrested, never charged with any crime. But the accusation was serious enough, so much so they say they had to leave school, their reputation in tatters. She pursed her lips. She rolled her eyes. But Nikki Yavito's body language couldn't change the outcome. A year in jail for telling a lie, a lie that cost two young men their college careers. My life has been altered and shaped in ways that nobody here could have imagined. Malik St. Hilaire was never arrested, but Yavino claimed he and another student raped her while all three attended Sacred Heart University in 2016. Instead, it was the Long Island native who was charged when the police investigation revealed sexual activity had occurred but was consensual. Prosecutors say Yavino made up the rape claim because she didn't want to upset another student she was interested in. Her willingness to accept this, um, this, this plea deal reflects her accountability for what happened. But it wasn't that simple. At first, Yavino insisted she had been assaulted and rejected a plea deal. It was only during jury selection before trial that she changed her mind again and pleaded guilty. Right, so I just hope that, you know, she knows what she's done and the fact that my life will never be the same. Like, I have anxiety, I have, like, PTSD from this. It's bad enough that they were accused of such heinous behavior, though never arrested. But then to have their, her story change over and over and over again, it's as if you were kicked while you were down. Well, the other student who chose to remain anonymous lost a football scholarship over this. Both men say they plan to sue Yuvino in civil court. As for the criminal case, she has been in custody since that guilty plea in June. It will count as time served towards that one-year sentence. And we're live in Bridgeport. Marcus Solis, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. This is the moment a man is exonerated after spending five years in jail. He broke down into tears after hearing the verdict. My only dream in the world was to just be free and to have the same opportunity as everybody here. He was a 16-year-old star linebacker with a full-ride scholarship to USC, when in 2002 a classmate accused him of raping her. Although he argued it was consensual, his defense attorney gave him a choice, plead guilty or risk a trial that could send him to prison for life. When you go into that courtroom, the jury is going to see a big black teenager and you're automatically going to be assumed guilty. Those are her exact words. He went to prison and served five years inside. After being released, his accuser reached out to him on Facebook. He arranged for her to meet a private investigator and secretly recorded the whole thing. Did he hurt you? No, he did not hurt you. The accuser later went on to say she did not want to admit that publicly, as she was scared of losing her $1.5 million settlement that she had gotten after suing the school district. I may not ever get the answers as to why I was supposed to go through what I went through, but I know that I'm here today and I remain unbroken. I understand the emotional pain of women being raped. If I identify a rapist, I will kill him, if given the chance. But that doesn't give anyone the right to easily ruin others' lives. The consequences of such an accusation are physical violence, humiliation, bankruptcy, loss of family and friends, and every opportunity in life. I said I would kill him if given a chance, did I not? That is the thing. A liar manipulating people like me as if I was a puppet. Just imagine your father, son, or brother being like that. That consequence is a hundred times greater than the emotional pain of being abused. When weighing the consequences of both sides, it is clear that one should be extremely careful with an accusation. But no, the reality is quite completely opposite. American women hold tremendous power, and they are abusing it. I have seen cases with absolutely no evidence, sometimes against evidence that the woman is clearly lying. But for some puzzling reason, or because of pressure from the loudest, the judge decided that the guy, the son, brother, and father of some other woman, was guilty. Why do the organizations and public opinion 
that protect women saying they fight for gender equality, don't speak up for men, or defend men's honor in the press after a false accusation. What justice are they doing? Say I'm wrong if you think so, and I'm ready to listen. But I think it's clear that they are drawing men and women into a war not for equality, but for power, and their own sick sense of superiority. And that makes me feel sick with some parts of American society. If women were as good liars as they claim they are, more of them would make more false allegations. 40% of men in prison for domestic violence were defending themselves from the woman attacking them. Not sure what to read from the above statistics. Domestic violence legislation is designed to protect females from males. A male domestic violence victim has little sympathy from investigators. I have seen many domestic violence matters before the courts, and it never ceases to amaze me how basic domestic violence law is used against males. For example, police are called to a house where a woman is screaming. A male, bleeding from the nose, opens the door. Police ask how he got that injury. She has been screaming at me and punched me on the nose. She was spoken to by the police and admitted hitting her husband but complained of abuse by him over the years, which he denied. Police took out a restraining order on the male. Another scenario. Works Christmas party. A couple has a horrific state of affairs. False allegations to the police are rare. Most women fear getting caught at some stage in the process. The time and effort required to go from an allegation to an actual conviction is long. Most women will make a false allegation simply to remove a man from their lives easily and quickly. Get the police to arrest the man, then refuse to testify, claiming that they were scared at the time. A lot of very suspect actions and behaviors are being carried out by women using the victimhood badge. But if a woman did make an actual false allegation to the police, she most certainly has to appear at the trial to prove her allegations. Here's the thing, and the herd proved this over and over and over again. Once a woman accuses a man, the man loses his career and money immediately. Plus his lawyers tell him regardless if he's innocent to pay the woman off, but the damage is done before proving otherwise. Just look at Johnny Depp, he was fired from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, all because of the crap he was going through. Amber Heard falsely accused him, and it was proven later that he was the innocent victim. But he was fired immediately. Nobody wanted to employ him in any films. But as we all know, women lie, some very badly. This is exactly what's wrong in America now. Women falsely accuse men after decades of no contact, because they want money, so they have a super comfy life. The first verdict will happen on Twitter, or any other social media. So no. A woman doesn't have to prove the false allegation. Your career, business, and social status will be destroyed as soon as she decides to do it. Harsh times for pickup artists. They have to vet girls nowadays, like the CIA. And still, most of them are on the hook for some payments to an ex that accused them of something. The opinion of the courts in the aftermath is not really important. It's guilty as soon as she decides it. Anyway, that's all for today on manhood. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons, and also click on the notification bell to be the first to know when I drop a new video. If you find value in my videos, you can show your support through PayPal or Cash App. The links are in the description. See you next time. Cheers.